So CRISPR, simply put, is like the cut and paste tool for the language of life, which would be DNA. Imagine you have a really long book which represents your DNA, and you want to edit a specific sentence in it. CRISPR is the smart editor that helps you find that sentence, cut it out, and even replace it with something new. It stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. The key to this lies in a protein called Case 9, which acts like scissors, and a guide molecule that directs Case 9 to the exact spot in the DNA you want to change. So, scientists can use CRISPR to fix or tweak specific genes in plants, animals, and humans. It can be used for treating diseases, creating genetically modified crops, or further understanding how our genes work. Scientists call it the ultimate DNA word processor. Now, CRISPR has already been approved by the FDA to treat diseases and there are successful cases where CRISPR has helped people with diseases such as sickle cell. So far so good, right? Well, the procedure costs $2.2 million, so I'm not sure how they are going to make this affordable to the average person anytime soon. In the meantime, it seems as though anything goes right now. I mean, Scientists are using CRISPR to manipulate anything and everything they can get their hands on. They are, in a manner of speaking, genetically defiling plants, animals, and people. And strangely enough, they're even trying to bring back giants. There is this science fiction story created some time ago that revolves around a man named Vincent Freeman, who is what's called in that context a natural-born individual who was conceived without any genetic manipulation. In that particular society, most people are conceived through in vitro fertilization with genetic screening allowing parents to choose desirable traits for their children. Vincent, who was deemed genetically inferior, had dreams of working for an aerospace corporation, a space exploration company. And to achieve this, his goal, he takes on the identity of a genetically superior but paralyzed individual named Jerome Morrow. Now in this story, Vincent faces numerous challenges and risks as he attempts to hide his true identity as he pursues his dreams of space travel. Within the plot, there are themes of discrimination, identity, and the potential consequences of a society that is reliant on genetic determinism. That story is the story of the 1997 film Gattaca. So in the film you have genetic discrimination where individuals are classified and discriminated against based on their genetic profile. Those considered genetically superior have access to better opportunities while those deemed inferior faced prejudice and limitations. Gattaca explores the dark side of a society where genetic information is used 
to define a person's worth. It represents one possible future with the advancement of gene therapies and manipulation. When there exist plenty of issues or challenges with using the technology that we can identify already. CRISPR technology is designed to target specific genes, but it may also affect genes that were not intended for modification. And this could lead to changes in an organism's DNA, potentially causing harmful consequences or unwanted genetic mutations. And when someone attempts to create genetically modified organisms with specific traits, that may unintentionally result in negative ecological impacts or harm to non-target species. The technology could be misused for the development of bioweapons, deliberate alterations to the genomes of pathogens or organisms could enhance their spread or resistance. When it comes to creating individuals with specific traits for purposes other than treating genetic diseases, then it creates issues about equality and societal values. There is something called germline editing that involves making changes to the DNA that can be passed on to future generations. And misusing germline editing without understanding the long-term consequences could result in irreversible genetic changes that impact entire populations. We're talking about mutants. Altered organisms, disrupted ecosystems, imbalances. If only certain groups or individuals have access to genetic enhancements or treatments, it may widen the gap between those who can afford genetic interventions and those who cannot, further increasing the divide between the rich and the poor. The lack of oversight in this could lead to irresponsible experimentation. You see, right now, they can get away with a lot more than they will be able to get away with in the future after they feel the need to regulate a problem that CRISPR has created. Look, they've already experimented with plants and animals on a level that is completely perverted. They've created tomatoes for improved flavor, reduced browning, and enhanced shelf life. For instance, the high GABA Sicilian Rouge tomatoes, they were edited using CRISPR. They have been sold in Japan. They've done this with apples and pears, grape vines, watermelons, citrus, bananas, cacao, and a few other plant species. There are CRISPR edited browning resistant mushrooms that have been introduced to the market. High myelopectin, waxy corn, modified using CRISPR technology, that has been developed and is likely to reach the market soon. When it comes to animals, hey, how many of you have seen the movie Rampage with Dwayne Johnson? Well, take a look at this. How CRISPR is making farmed animals bigger, stronger, and healthier. So perhaps it's no surprise that scientists have started experimenting with CRISPR in farm animals. One popular target is a gene called myostatin, which codes for a protein that controls muscle growth. Interfering with this gene can lead to muscle overgrowth. In other words, you end up with big, muscly animals and eventually more meat. Scientists have already experimented with using CRISPR to generate super muscly cattle, pigs, sheep, rabbits and goats. These studies have not had perfect results. Many of the animals didn't survive infancy and a lot of them had weirdly large tongues. In 2021, Japan approved the sale of two CRISPR edited fish. One of them is the beefed up red sea bream. The other is a tiger puffer fish 
that's also designed to be heavier. The researchers behind the transgenic catfish are hoping they'll get it approved for commercial production in the U.S., but that could take a while. Only one gene-edited fish has so far been approved for sale in the U.S., and it took decades to get it to that point. That fish, Aqua Advantage Salmon, has a genetic modification that makes it grow bigger. As a result, it takes 25% less feed to get these salmon to the size at which they can be sold, says Sylvia Wolf, CEO and president of Aqua Bounty, the company that produces the fish. And of course, folks, this new Franken fish is not nearly as healthy as non-GE salmon. Take a look at this nutrition chart comparing the differences. A larger fish with significantly less nutrition. And of course, when people start eating transgenic food, they are going to have experiences with major health issues. It's inevitable. And of course, the drug companies love that. They want to sell more drugs. So in order to do that, the food has to be more toxic. That has been the food and drug company's game for a very long time. Throughout history, instances of scientific advancement leading to unforeseen consequences has been prevalent. From unethical medical trials to environmental catastrophes, the aftermath of prioritizing progress over prudence has been marked by suffering and irreversible damage. You see, the rapid evolution of novel pharmaceuticals, genetic engineering, and other cutting-edge scientific endeavors presents an opportunity for progress in healthcare and beyond, but there are risks associated with these advancements. Inadequately vetted medical treatments and interventions almost always have side effects, creating health complications and even loss of life. Look at the drug commercials. They tell you in the commercial that the drugs are not safe. The environmental impact of unchecked scientific experimentation is a threat to the equilibrium of our planet. We need to ensure that scientific progress is pursued with a commitment to ethical principles and safeguarding human well-being. There has to be a demand for transparency, a demand for accountability, regulations to control the exploitation of an individuals in the name of scientific advancement. A person should never just take their word for it because they have found a way to lie to us legally. Because there is always a catch. If something is too good to be true, when it comes to the government and the healthcare industry, it probably isn't true. Many of us are all well aware of what they are trying to do to us. From their experimental drugs, manipulating our genes through injections and our food supply, which keeps getting worse by the way. They want to push people into eating bugs, GMO crops, and mutant animals. And if we aren't paying attention, they will push these markets forward to the point where you're going to need gene therapy just to digest their genetically enhanced food stuff. They are already creating larger animals with this technology. Giants. In that movie called Rampage, which came out in 2018, that revolves around a primatologist who shares a strong bond with an extraordinarily intelligent albino silverback gorilla named George. But a genetic experiment gone wrong mutates George into a raging giant creature. Now as the story unfolds, it is discovered that there are other similarly altered animals and these newly created alpha predators go on a 
destructive rampage across North America, leaving a trail of devastation. So, to prevent a global catastrophe, they get a genetic engineer to create an antidote. The movie explores the problems of genetic editing and its potential for widespread destruction. Gene editing of this nature was once purely science fiction. Now it's reality. I guess that means one day films like Rampage and Jurassic Park will become looked at as documentaries.